So what these two are doing, wow. This isn't new, it's just still being done. <laughs> They're both together working on deconstructing the faith and saying that if you don't do things the way that they do them, if you don't have this presumptive witchcraft oriented, I'm going to make God give me my healing. It belongs to me. That, that paralyzation, God has guaranteed me in her mind that that is my right now to be unparalyzed, to be healed. And I'm just going to drive him nuts with prayer until he gives me what he wants. How many people can you think of that have been taken at like Benny Hen concerts and stuff like that, or whatever you want to call them, gatherings? I was just watching something last night and going, listening to this woman that when she was a child, her mom and her went to a Benny Hen thing and they diverted her right away from the stage. Nope, you're not going to get healed. <laughs> and they knew it and they, they pushed her away and that really broke her down. And then they, uh, you know, we're talking with her as she, you know, had grown up. She still loved the Lord and all that kind of thing. But there is a game that is being played is what I want to tell you with people that know for a fact that God does not guarantee a healing to everybody in their sanctification. That's not. His own nephew says that he's not seen one healing at a Benny Hinn crusade. Yeah. Um, so this, th this pushing this idea that no, no, you're, you, the problem is you don't believe that this is nothing more than, than word of faith, nonsense, manipulating people. You got it. You got to buy my book and then you can know how you're doing it all wrong. <laughs> then you can have this whole vast world of nothing but signs and wonders, going and hanging out with Jesus. Don't you want to be with Jesus? And I can get richer. <laughs> um, I think every Christian would say, yes, I would love to see Jesus. Do I think it is the will of God that every single person gets put up into heaven and sees Jesus? Probably not at this point in well, your sanctification. Thing, she never once says that somebody else was there and was taken to heaven with her as two witnesses to prove that she's actually been taken to heaven. Yeah. Because we all know she's full of cow dungy wongy 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 wongy. Right. And when you consider that Sid Ross' whole platform is to bring in, she's kind of one of the lighter ones that's passing it off, but you need a simple vanilla apostasy person, if you know what I mean. A very simple, not crazy, wild eyed, although she kind of does have crazy wild eyes, but you know what I'm saying? She, she seems very normal. In comparison to the Todd Bentleys, just kick her, kick her in the face. That's how you're going to heal her, you know, to the very opposite end of insanity and then everything in between. And they all serve their purpose. But remember, he's had on Patricia King and Patricia King taught the entire studio audience that you just do these different little witchcrafty things and you get to go up into the presence of heaven. And, and if you, if you haven't achieved that, or you haven't achieved your miracle that belongs to you. If your kid gets cancer and is sick and you prayed for that kid to be healed and, and that kid didn't get healed and that kid died, that's your fault. You didn't have enough faith. You didn't do something right. You didn't say the right thing. You didn't believe hard enough. You didn't understand something. And that is a horrible, awful, disgusting, evil burden to put on somebody. You know, what if your husband gets sick or your wife gets sick or something do we live in a world where the Bible gives explanation for why people die? Oh, that's right. Eden. What happened in Eden? Sin. Right. It's almost like they are just trying to divorce and amputate out the consequence. Was not God super abundantly clear when you read the Bible cover to cover that something happened with our parents who had major power? There was a consequence. We got trapped up into this situation. And because of their spiritual death that also got passed on to us, there is a byproduct of physical death. It happens. It's sad when it happens, but it happens. Are there times when somebody is super sick and God uses medicine or even supernatural means 
to, to bring somebody back from the edge. Yes. But to tell people that that is always the will of God for you is to tell them you're adding to the scripture is what you're doing. And even just that idea that should be something so um, solidified in your spirit because it's bookended in scripture. The Torah tells you not to add to it or else. And the book of Revelation tells you don't add to it or else not good things will happen to you. And you have these people that are trying to present this idea to you that this is what Christianity is. And they just sort of erase away the, the curse. Who's the one that erases the curse? Who's the one that when he finally touches down the Feast of Atonement or what the Gentiles always call the second coming at the very end of the tribulation, I'm talking about the very end. What does that mean? It means the king has come and there's an end to the curse, the rest, the rest has come. Why do you think he said, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. I am the Lord of the rest. I have control over this, but see, they want to circumvent his consequence. And you've heard me say it before. I'll say it again. The, even the church fathers, many of them believe that this, that when Peter says, as one day is as a thousand years to the Lord, it's literally a mathematical formula. The seven days of Genesis correlate out to 7,000 years. And remember, it's that last thousand years that's the rest, the peace and prosperity, the environment, the animal kind, the, the humans. There's not going to be any Planned Parenthood operating in Jesus's kingdom. There will just be an immediate justice. People won't won't be entertaining evil. Anyhow, blah, 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 blah. These people are lying to you and trying to change what Christianity is and even how you deal with problems. And if God says that there is uh, a reason why he handles things the way that he does, and even to taste and experience disappointment or to taste and experience anything other than, you know, fantabulous life, there is some type of benefit in that that is good for us that I don't fully understand, but they're trying to rob you of it. I was thinking about this yesterday. All these word of faith people. Um, I, I, I was actually listening to Kosti uh, Hens Church, and there was a couple pastors. I was listening to one of the pastors, and it was so refreshing because he was going over Psalm 10. And in Psalm 10, he was just being straight out honest. And he read the whole scripture. You know, it was so amazing to hear a sermon where they read the whole scripture. <laughs> and then he taught you what it meant. And I think that if the Holy Spirit, well, not if the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit was there. But let's just say if Jesus was there and he was listening in, right, in this metaphorical picture that I'm painting, I think Jesus would have been very pleased with the sermon because it wasn't somebody else's thoughts about something and then peppering in a token scripture like you see so many churches do. I hate those kind of churches. It makes me sick to my stomach. I can't listen to those. But he actually taught the scripture. And Psalm 10 is about what happens when somebody does evil to you and how do you deal with it? And I was just sitting there thinking about how all these NAR people, all these word of faith people, they're always lying and trying to paint this picture of your best life now and everything's great and dandy. And it's always your will that you get your way. And it's always your will that you manipulate God and everything is always for your good. And it's kind of like that Veruca salt effect, if you will, from Willy Wonka. Remember that, you know, you had this rotten little spoiled brat that she wanted everything. Her dad was worthless and he gave her everything she wanted. And, you know, there was a consequence that happened to all the kids, but that one especially. And God, God says that there, that, you know, there is something efficacious about the use of pain. There is, there just is. And pain oftentimes will lead you to Christ for people that are not in Christ. So I'm concerned when these people paint this idea, uh, I, um, idyllic type of picture that you know, you're always going to get your healing. You're always going to get this good thing that's coming. Um, what about real life when that isn't the case? You, you, you can't operate in a life of an illusion. This is not helpful to people, but this is what Sid Roth and on, on, Anna Werner want you to believe. Hashtag heaven. You just... You just do this stuff. Don't get in that prayer posture of defeat down on the floor, humble to God. <laughs>
You demand your miracle of God now. Do your little witchcraft shukabumba. And you will force God, tie his arm behind his back and make him do what you want. Oh, wait, no, that's not God. This this is not Christianity. No matter how prim and proper this woman looks with her little purple coat, which looks very nice on her, and her little purple eyeshadow and her big blue eyes, attractive woman. Again, this is not Christianity. I do. I really do hang with people as they, you know, when I minister until they get their breakthrough, you know, so we until they get their breakthrough. Are you there for them when they don't get their breakthrough and they actually have to deal with whatever tragedy, difficulty, et cetera, et cetera, that has happened and you have to sit in that pain? What, what do you do when you ask God for something and God says no or not yet? Because those are other options available to, I don't know, I don't know, the sovereign creator of the universe. Is it okay if he says no? Is it okay with you? That'd be all right with you, little creation? I think God is trying to also teach us that he's the sovereign and we're the creation. And he he will have a time when he goes here and no further. And that the king of the Sabbath brings in the glory. He brings in his rule, his kingdom rule of peace and righteousness. These people are trying to manipulate and lie to you and tell you that you're actually the one in control of this. And he's your little genie. And you just figure out what way do I rub that lamp or click my heels or tap my fingers or whatever, 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 right? This is, this is the heart of what witchcraft is. This is the thing to understand that I'm, you know, realizing in my older age too, I'm going to be 44 pretty quick here. Witchcraft is not just something that you see on Netflix with a whole bunch of, you know, a coven of witches that are all doing weird things and hurting people and, you know, whatever, whatever, running around naked in the woods and whatever. There is so much witchcraft that is being done in the church trying to manipulate God and manipulate you and call this and label it the faith. This is so demonic, but it doesn't look like it, does it? She's an attractive woman sitting here. She's speaking reasonable, but this is not, this is not the truth. We were praying for him and we're praying and quoting scripture and everything. And then I start laughing. Ugh. Oh, it hits me. And I, <laughs> I said, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Look, I'm not laughing because you're paralyzed. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, and I have to apologize. I said, I'm just so full of the presence of God. I feel so happy. <laughs> and I'm like, he loves you. And I'm laughing. Well, what happened is the presence just went on him. Like I could. <sighs> you're kidding me, right? So you've invaded someone's church. And I, I don't believe any of this, by the way, either. I, I don't think there was a church. I don't think there was a man that was paralyzed. Do I know that for sure? No, I wasn't there. But I don't believe this woman. And even if it was, she's trying to tell you that she sought this Does paralyzed. She pictures? Does she have no, videos? no, she have no, they've recreated it with uh, actors. So there's this poor black man. When I say poor, I mean not in the sense of money poor, but like empathy poor, who's paralyzed at church. And she has come over to accost him to give him his miracle. That's his right by God. It's your right to have your miracle. And she starts praying, quoting scripture. And then she starts laughing like a psychopath. And then she apologizes to him because she says that her joy splashed out onto him. Because now the joy of the Lord is no longer this sense of feeling happy that whatever you're going through, there's an end to this hell and everything that is Jesus is coming. Everything that Jesus stands for as a wonderful, kind, loving creator. And, you know, there's a phrase that I've thought about many times in my life that you can get through whatever if you just know that somebody loves you. And for some people, they don't have anybody that loves them, but God loves them if they'll accept it. And she is treating the joy of the Lord like, like it's not an abstract feeling or a, a reality of, of the summation of your, sorry, more stretches, of the things that God has promised coming to you that you have to have patience for. I mean, there was an entire chapter written in Hebrews about 
our patriarchs, all of these really important people in faith, they died waiting for their glorification, essentially. They didn't get the full end of it, but they died in trust and, and God has these promises coming. But no, 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 no. Anna or Anna or whatever her name is says that this is like a almost like a um, I'm going to say physical thing. I don't know what word to use for it, but it's something that that splashes out of her <laughs> onto this other paralyzed man. It's 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 a thing you can manipulate. This is so wicked and disgusting. It sounds more like a kundalini spirit than the spirit of the Holy Father. Oh, that's a good point. That is a really good point. I I don't know if you've heard that or not, but um, my husband said I'll turn up a little. My husband said it sounds like the kundalini spirit more than the Holy Spirit. Excellent point because in, in everything with this fake church that's being brought into being, well, it's been here for a while. Uh, everything is counterfeit. So they don't actually have the Holy Spirit. They use these other spirits that are rotten angels. The see now as a seer, I can see when there's impartation. And it <sighs> did you hear it? She is. She's one of them. She's a seer, and she she just defined for you that this was an impartation. Now I have showed you as well as many many other beautiful human beings on the Christian circuit, just moms and dads and really nobodies uh, that don't have a big, huge, you know, bank accounts and stuff that Satan's tapping with many, just regular people that care about the bride of Christ and care about holding the truth up through the Bible. Uh, so we have warned about these NAR oriented psychopath church services where they have this impartation and you've seen, you've seen the laughing that breaks out. You've seen the animal noises that break out. You've seen the people twitching. You've seen the people that lay on the floor uh, just a couple feet away from Heidi Baker, for example, who are shrieking and screaming in torment and horror because they just got demon possessed or they have demons on the outside of them that can't be seen with these eyes, just like germs can't be seen with these eyes and many other things. And they are crying and screaming and shrieking and freaking and writhing, writhing. And she ignores them. Uh, people falling on the floor, flopping around, acting stupid, all, all that stuff. And it's all from that counterfeit spirit. And I was right. I was right that this is what this Sid Roth and this woman, Anna, have been setting you up for the last 15 and a half minutes. And then she starts using the keywords. My impartation just splashed out of me onto this poor paralyzed man was laughing at him. I had to apologize. I'm not laughing at your, your, your state of condition. This is so evil. It just fell and, and he started and then he's like, oh, and he starts laughing and he's like, oh, and I'm like, your neck just moved. Did you see that? And he goes, I did. So, Wait, 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 wait. She has to observe for him <laughs> that you just moved a part of your paralyzed body because he certainly wouldn't have noticed that as a paraplegic who has suffered the horror of not having control of his body. He, of course, on his own wouldn't have noticed that part of his paralyzed body is moved only because Anna was nice enough to impart her witchcraft her shiki boom boom. <laughs> her shiki boom boom onto this poor black man so then then jesus i heard holy spirit say on a sing over him <laughs> this is souping you up and priming you to purchase i'm certain a video a book a some kind of how-to product is coming it's coming. <laughs> Do you see how the NAR people are disguised among us? This, this literally, when you start to understand the number of churches that this has come to, they don't they don't sit and read scripture and teach you. You don't sit and have um, prayer circles and stuff like that. You just have antics and witchcraft and play with demonic spirits. People call the Holy Spirit. Now, now, now Anna is supposed to sing over him. I feel a book deal coming soon here.
And I'm like, oh no, like I'm not a professional singer, you know, but I said, okay, um, excuse me, I'm going to sing over you now. And he said, okay, what? Let's bring it, whatever you got, bring it, you know, he was open. So then I just started singing over him. And he oh, I know where this is going. Okay. They're going to say that he had a partial healing when the impartation of the Kundalini splashed out from her to him because she was laughing. And now God, supposedly God, how do you know it's God? How do you know it's God? Now the Holy Spirit and Jesus <laughs> have told her sing over him. And so now she's going to use more of her seer, seer prophetess, witchcraftian powers. And she's going to get him his full healing. And you too can have your full healing too. So if your kid has some kind of critical injury or disease or your husband, a police officer, got shot in the head and uh, is in vegetable state, or, 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 you, you just need the prophetess to come visit you and laugh at you and sing over you. And then you, your healing is yours. If these people were legitimately doing this, you couldn't keep them out of hospitals, right? You couldn't keep them. <coughs> away from the burn units where people are suffering head to toe and getting infection and dying. You couldn't keep them out of the cancer wards for the and children. China and heal all those sick people in China that are dying right and left. Yeah. Why is it that it's all these strange little subjective, I was in church and I spotted someone who needed my help. <laughs> if, if I had the kind of power that these people claim to have, I would be mapping out hospitals and who, you know, who needed this uh, healing more than anybody who was about ready to kick off and die, you know, that kind of a thing. These people are liars. They're disgusting. And they're doing this in the name of Jesus. And they're not real. Watch. She's going to get his full healing. Now she's going to tell you. He got completely healed. He was completely healed. Wildest story. And um, it happened to be his birthday. No, we didn't know that. And so he went, got running out of his wheelchair into the church boy and said, I've been healed. Okay. How long has homeboy been paralyzed? I'm sorry. Two words. Muscle atrophy. And I'm supposed to believe that he instantly, he was healed the moment I began hovering over him singing. And then he bolted upright out of the chair and went running and his, his muscles had no atrophy whatsoever. He was able to, it was his birthday. <sighs> She's pouring it on a little thick here and Sid's letting her and the audience is licking this up and this is going to go out to all the people that want to hear this nonsense. And again, the millennials, why don't the millennials want to be part of the church? Why don't you like us? Exactly. But she's not Jesus. <laughs> and I don't believe anything. And I can, I know why she's not bringing the Bible up except to bring up that one verse in Philippians. You can't find anything in the Bible about impartation. And you can't find anything in the Bible about it's always God's will that you be healed now in your sanctification. This woman is a liar. I've been healed. Miracles of God are real. Miracles of God are real. And it's my birthday. It was amazing. Oh, no. When we return, I'm going to ask Anna oh, please to don't. sing Jesus over you. And if you can bear it, I will sing his Hebrew name, Yeshua. And this one new man, Jew and Gentile, one in Messiah anointing, I believe it's going to release supernatural joy and miracles. And maybe Anna will see a few body parts for you. Be right back. <laughs> this is so weird. <laughs> maybe 
you shall see a few <laughs> kidneys and toes and toenails and, and uh, potatoes oh. for you. Okay. Um. Wow. Wow. The, you have to understand that there are professional doctors and nurses and stuff that they I'll be I'll be careful what I say here but y you have to understand there are people who go through some type of physical trauma children adults somebody has caused great physical harm onto certain body parts because somebody was doing something they ought not to do and so you have doctors and nurses that have to be highly skilled surgeons to know how to reconstruct those tender body parts. Are you following what I'm saying? <clears throat> if these people were really able to do this, they would go lend their services to children that had been pulled out of homes with monsters. Do you understand what I'm saying? And they would pray that God would heal those little body parts. These people are straight out scumbag liars. I'm sorry to use the, the label scumbag, but to tell people that you can manipulate God like this, this is the normative function of the church. This is what the church looks like. And this is what the designation now of the one new mankind, Jews and Gentiles together. Yes, Ephesians 2.15. It is all about guaranteeing you to be able to basically use your God-like powers. Now, they didn't say that, but that's the implication. So if you're a seer and you have the impartation and you can do all these things and you can command these healings on demand, but subjectively, of course, not where you actually go to a hospital and help someone, not where you actually go help a kid that's about ready to kick off and die, et cetera, et cetera. But no, no, there are little subjective canned sermon at stories that work well for TV to sell books and garbage and nonsense. Um, these, these people are basically wetting your appetite for taking God's sovereignty and power away from him, essentially kicking him in the face. Kick your boom, boom, God in the face. <laughs> and now you're God, right? Because you're the one wielding the powers. You're the one calling the shots. You're the one that is the beloved. So this is very disturbing to me too, because he goes, well, we'll have Anna uh, or Anna or whatever her name is, uh, sing over you. And so they've elevated this woman to this place of power and he'll, he'll sing Jesus's name in Hebrew, which is beautiful. And you'll have, you'll have this, this air, the one new mankind in Christ in Sid Ross studio, uh, which Jesus did come to bring a one new mankind, the Jew and the Gentile together in the olive tree. Jesus is the olive tree. Um, so that's true, but see, they are taking the context of the verses and pouring their own meaning in. So instead of you no longer being a sinner and being a new creation in Christ and having this life in this world and this, this, this new heavens and this new earth, this existence with Jesus, this eternal life with Jesus, this marriage with Jesus, all of that traditional stuff that, um, is found in the Bible. No, 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 we don't, we don't want to deal with any of that. No, this is about you becoming the supernatural God heir. And even though they're not telling you the word God, see, this is more sneaky. That's where they're going with this. This is the same thing I just did a video about with che, uh, Cheon and this one new mankind, the firstborn. The, um, I'm telling you, they're counterfeiting everything and they're going to superimpose a fake church as gods on earth through the lie. They're not only faking the church with an anti-bride, the whore of Babylon, worldwide rebellion of people that want to become gods, but also they are saying, and they're, they're peppering this into people's consciousness. They're seeding you with this, uh, that you're the heir and that people that don't believe in signs and miracles, well, you're not, you're not the heir. You're not operating in the miracles and signs that Jesus would have for you. And, you know, it's almost to the point where we don't even really need Jesus. We we have the seer power and our impartation and blah, blah, blah. And they, they want to fiddle with your brain and make you think that this is what church is. And that's so boring when you go to regular church and just hear about the word of God and stuff. <laughs> this is really evil. They've elevated her to a place of profit. Oh, here's the book deal. Hey, that's kind of spendy. Good. Reef. 
Did you ever wonder where God was when you experienced disappointments, offenses, grief, and loss? Is there a way to obtain every blessing and promise that God has for you? Call now and get Anna Werner's brand new book, The Warrior's Dance, and her anointed three-part audio CD teaching series, The Warrior's Victory. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 966. Okay, 35 bucks? That's kind of spendy. Uh, this teaching will get you through the biggest door of God's favor and glory in history. <laughs> You did not just promise that, Sidra. <laughs> See, this is all predicated on lies and hyping you up. I, I wonder how many people are crying because their husband has been stricken with cancer or their wife has been stricken with cancer or there was a car accident or the house caught fire and you didn't get to the babies in time or what, whatever. You know, I don't want to come up with every possible sad thing that could happen, but stuff happens. How many people are in that place and they they hear this and they're desperate? And yes, yes, I will give you a donation of $35 to hear this woman because there's something special about her. She's a prophetess. She has this information that only she has because God gave it to her and now she'll teach it to me. And yeah, now <laughs> The, the, this is and then Sid's going to guarantee you things, right? Because every Christian should be guaranteeing things that only belong to the sovereign. Wouldn't that kind of make you be stepping on God's toes and be acting as if you were God? And that's not a strange thing to think because that's where this whole transhumanist thing is going. Now, this is not talking about the technology part of it. No, this is talking about the the witchcraft spiritual part of it. But those things get married together in the coming time. You're being seated for something so evil and disgusting. Well, I don't plan on being here for it, but for those who will, here's your lie. <clears throat> Eight. Anna Werner's brand new book, The Warrior's Dance, is a seer's guide to victorious oh. spiritual warfare. Discover how to recognize telltale signs of demonic operation. Partner with the Holy Spirit to demolish demonic strongholds. Move in nine different levels of spiritual warfare that will propel you into victory over every attack of the enemy. Change your position from past failure into present victory. Engage in spiritual warfare from the place of victory instead of being hyper-focused on the devil demons and darkness the book includes powerful prayers to oh. break free from generational curses get free from emotional yeah go dance like that outside the house go go do that what does it say the dance of breaking chains and deliverance feeding our emotions thank god thank god that's not his name. That's what he is. Thank you for a new day, a beautiful rest for my emotions, spirit, and soul. Father, would you refresh me and set my eyes on you? I thank you for your love. I'm so grateful. I choose peace, love, kindness, forgiveness, goodness, gentleness, hope, encouragement, faith, and <laughs> self-control. <laughs> she did not just include that in the prayer. <laughs> I can't manifest this in churches when I'm praying for paralyzed people. But I can totally tell you how to do it. I want to leak your presence. What? That's not in the Bible anywhere. I don't like that. Because what it is doing is it is legitimizing. My husband said it earlier. That was great. Uh, good job. The Kundalini spirit that is taking place in churches in the hyper signs and wonders atmosphere, with the laughing and the crying and the shrieking and the screaming and the absolute insanity that's going on. And you see it with the fire tunnels in Israel because there's an R Israel. You see it in Michael Brown, <laughs> Jews for Jesus, big giant liar, Michael Brown who denies that NAR is even a thing because he's totally into NAR. He has the fire tunnels, all this stuff. The things that you see happening in the churches, she's now teaching people in the book and teaching people that you can leak the presence of God out of you, which is what the anointing is. When you get anointed, it means the Holy Spirit has gone into you. 
And then they're, you know, the refilling of the spirit could be about, you know, you letting him have control, something in your sanctification, et cetera, et cetera. But anyhow, I, I need to study that a little bit more. But anyhow, if you can leak the presence of God out onto others, are you not God? It doesn't even say that Peter or Paul or James or John did anything like that. That's true. It says that they healed people during their ministry, but it doesn't say that they used the Spirit out on people. Hey, for $35? You can not only get the power to leak things out onto people, but you can become God too. We just, we're, we're going to do it sneaky so we don't actually verbalize that. But when you sit and meditate and think deeply and use your brain, instead of being distracted by the television, the movies, the videos and everything else, you really like use brain power, which we should all do. And you consider what the ramifications of consequence is are whatever uh she's telling you that you can leak god out onto people and create healings and and she described what she did with that man mm -hmm. i know this is going to sound shocking but it almost sounds like she had a spiritual sex act with him why and she was over him she sang over him and then she spirit well you know i don't know if i would put it that far but i do know that there are scriptures that talk about this sensual uh wisdom and it's not of god uh, i forget if it's in james it's um you know to the, the the whole issue of counterfeit 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 is certainly there um very strange. We'll, we'll just put it that way. You know, you want to be that sweet savor of salt that draws people into Christ and interest, not wigs them out, freaks them out, and makes them, you know, concerned, right? If you're acting as a seer, a seer is someone, the seer of indoor. Yeah. The seer is someone who can see things that are in natural realm. Right. We're not called to be <clears throat> seers in the Bible. Exactly. Nowhere in Paul's writings of the gifts and impartations of the Spirit does it talk about being a seer. Yeah, there's some apostles, some some uh, some elders, and uh, some seers. No, it's not there. Exactly. Exactly. What is that Ephesians four? You said. Um. You know, the other thing about this, too, that concerns me is it's not enough about you going into error. This is now about pushing other people into error. There, There is a movement away. How many people are going to be angry when they try to do this? Mm -hmm. to work, their children die or their right. friends die, and they're going to feel bad. And they'll just say, God. Did you read the book with the full spirit in your heart? <laughs> it's your fault, not mine. Right. You didn't have enough faith. That's so sorry, little little Timmy died after he got hit by a car. You just didn't have enough faith. Um, so it's really about also causing people to run away from Jesus. If that's Christianity, I don't want it. That that's brilliant. That's that's what the devil wants. So you, she says, I want to leak your presence and glory to those around me. Now you might say, well, she just means metaphorically, maybe, but based on what she said about other things, now you have a context for what she's talking about. She literally believes that she's hanging out in heaven in this vision, dancing and emitting light with ballet shoes. She's just spraying all over people everywhere. <laughs> she's the whole it's well, I, I don't know if that's exactly the connotation she meant, but she. She, she's odd what she's saying here. Uh, give me your heart for others and your eyes to see from a heavenly perspective. Amen. And then it says, while it's so easy to let our mouths run when we get hit by irritations or even hard attacks of the enemy, I encourage you to keep a muzzle over your mouth. Uh, let your mouth not become a vocal piece for the enemy to release his weapons and fiery darts over you and others. Proverbs 1821 says that's in life. And I don't know what she's going to say because it cuts off. Wow. 
controls. Obtain a godly perspective. Enter into a rest from controlling spirits. Obtain unshakable faith. You will also receive Anna Werner's anointed three-part audio CD teaching series, The Warrior's Victory. This series. The anointing is something that happens with kings in Israel when they would pour the oil over them to give you a visual picture to help you understand that literally the Holy Spirit who can't be seen with these eyes is going into the king to rule, right? And then in the New Testament church, it means getting reborn and getting the Holy Spirit in you. All these people that are constantly saying that this physical object and that physical object is anointed. I don't see that anywhere in scripture at all. I don't, you know, again, they are changing the definitions. They're, they're, they're taking the same words, but pouring new definitions into it. I would be very suspect of this stuff. Will help you overcome doubt, fear, and enter into a new season of birthing the next level of fulfillment in God's. Isn't that why you read the Bible to renew your mind according to the washing of the word and the Holy Spirit and get into the minds and brains and teachings of the apostle? Oh, you don't want to use that boring <laughs> yeah. We're, It's still sticking in my husband's craw that we heard Michael Heiser. I did videos on this, so you should know. But Michael Heiser said, quote, the Bible is boring. And he's a uh, biblical theologian. So it's still sticking in our craw. We're, we're, we're still a little burned and hurt by that. <laughs> and did you know, <laughs> did you know that Dr. Michael also teaches that glorification, you can become gods? Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to do a video on that as time permits. And uh, anyhow, on and on and on it goes. All this weirdness, all this, you know, you're the supernatural wonder. That's the lie birthing the next level see and i don't like that either too because these people that are not truly legitimately born again in in jesus god actually does want to birth a one new mankind and if you go poke around and read in hosea i just figured something out that's how cold water boils faster yeah. it's a hyper and wonder miracle yeah. there there is uh, an expectation that god has for mankind to repent and get into this eternal new mankind with Christ as the head. He sees his sons of God for real. Hold on. Did you, did you just say with Christ as the head? Christ as the head. Hmm. Does it really sound like these people think Christ is the head? No, I think they think they're the head. Uh, <clears throat> well, if you go poking around in Hosea, which is such a great book, you will see that there is a passage where God is very irritated and um, I, I think you can say angry because there is no new birth for those that have rejected it. And then he goes backwards, no conception and no pregnancy. And you might go, well, what does that mean? Well, again, according to this covenant, this personification of a covenant, <coughs> there is an end product of through Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, and Pentecost, this creation of the one new mankind. And remember, not everybody on the broad road, in fact, there's lots of people that reject it, is what I'm trying to say. And only the people on the narrow road allow for that rebirth. And we're waiting for the glorification. And people are trying to treat it like you're already there, but you're not. And there's people that are being distracted that have refused that. And God is acknowledging you're still slaves. And I want you to be ready for my glorification when I bring it. And um, people are so being distracted by the hyper signs and wonders that they're not hearing about how to be reborn. And they're not going to tell you, but they want to tell you that you can be birthed into the next level. And you just need to send them 35 bucks and, and, and get this anointed paraphernalia and then you too can become a witchcraft expert because that's really going to you get you <laughs> no no uh but this this will really get you to the point where uh jesus will be happy with you no jesus died so that we could become born again through his sacrifice and there notice how the whole and we haven't seen the whole entire thing yet here but i'm probably gonna be cutting us off pretty soon here or i'll Put it into two parts. I don't haven't decided yet, but um, you have heard zero point zero point zero on how to be born again. 
that's always absent from these programs. Nobody has talked about how to even be saved. And, and you might go, well, they're, but they're talking to an audience of people that are already Christians. Maybe. They're cheating you out of the ability to get reborn. And this TV time is expensive. You want to use each moment for the very most important information to be said. And they've just told you what's most important to them. And it's not the gospel. Blessings for your life. You will discover the power of praise and worship to help shift your focus from the schemes of the enemy onto Jesus. Usher in the powerful presence of God's glory. Shift the atmosphere so the enemy will flee. Cause your heart to connect with the Heavenly Father in a more powerful way. Receive special words of knowledge and prayer by Anna as she casts out fear and anxiety. Praise for... I don't like that. I don't like that. So she's... She's the special chosen one. Or is Jesus? Because I'm confused. Is it this chick or is it Jesus? I, I, I don't like this. For you to recover from a relational breakdown, commands the spirit of oppression to lift off of you. Praise for you to begin to hear the voice of God with clarity. Don't yeah, it's called Open Your Bible. Don't miss out on getting Anna Werner's brand new book, The Warrior's Dance, and her anointed three-part audio CD teaching series, The Warrior's Victory. This is an exclusive offer for our rich supernatural audience, yours, for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9668. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9668 or that if you will sing to the people that are watching no. in their homes in the studio audience, if you will sing just the song you sang for your husband, for your husband <laughs> when he was so critical, you thought he was dying, or the doctor said that, you just sang Jesus. If you will sing that over people, I believe they'll be healed. And then I will sing in... Uh, uh, Hebrew, the same thing that you sing, and then I believe you'll start functioning in words of knowledge. Oh, no. I'm oh, is she going to torture the studio audience? And the studio audience, obviously. I'm excited you're going to sing with me. Well, I th I, you, you, you haven't heard me yet, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> I can't believe I did this, by the way. <laughs> me uh, do me a favor and stand to your feet, no, please. No, don't look Stand to your feet, really. No. I want, and just, just be in the posture of, of receiving. All right, thank you. Okay, hold on. Exactly what? In the of <laughs> well, I think earlier she made a hit out on prayer because she said something about not being in a posture of defeat. Uh, in relationship to being up, floating around and singing and uh, not singing, I'm sorry, dancing. So I think she is cracking on people wanting to bow down in a humble posture to God, asking for help, assistance, praising, etc. And now she has the people standing up. So remember, this is all about the free will. The one thing that God has given you is free will. And Satan wants to deceive people into accepting kundalini spirits, evil spirits, fallen, fallen things, things that touch no unclean thing, God said. And you have these churches that we've already discussed that have all this rat nest of supernatural weird stuff that is satanic signs and wonders from Lucifer. And now he is kind of that next piece of the puzzle to help spread that but through the tv and through a more i don't know mundane wholesome non-threatening type of environment I, I don't know exactly what they're going to have these people into but they all seem to be very open free and willing and i wonder if she's going to have them i haven't seen this yet I wonder if she's going to have them raise their hands or lift their hands or anything. And I'm very mindful of Beyonce talking about, you know, remember Rolling Stone, a woman possessed Beyonce. Now she has a legion inside of her or many, uh, but she got her billion dollars. Um, 
she said that she raised her hands up before a breakout BET performance and uh, she felt something come inside of her. I wonder if this woman through this broadcast is going to be assisting. Oh, this is brand new too. Oh, wow. Holy cow. This was yesterday and he's had almost, wow. 60,569 views. This might even be a better way for the devil to use this impartation of demonic entities than individual churches where you maybe if you're a mega church maybe you've got four or five thousand seats this is seventy thousand now i don't spend a whole lot of time studying this stuff and getting into it and if people can bring this stuff into their houses and stuff i, I through the tv i i don't know about that stuff i don't know i just I love the Bible. I read the Bible. We know, we know <laughs> right. But she's having this studio audience stand up. And this woman is now going to do her witchcraft powers in the name of Jesus. And I just tend to wonder if she's going to encourage people to raise their hands. Just, oh, well, people have got their hands out. I receive it. I accept it. I need my kundalini. I need my godhood. As they start singing, this Jewish guy. They're, they're singing Yeshua, Yeshua. She's singing it. All their hands are up. Be normal. <laughs> Meditate. Okay. Now, people do talk with their hands and, and, and do these hand signs without thinking about it. It's the people that do them intentionally. Like we were looking at uh, all the uh, basketball players and different people that were doing that. Oh no. Now she's doing the words of knowledge. This is also how the 700 club does it too, right? They have all these words of knowledge for you, you and you. Somebody that is either here in the audience or you're watching this now, I just get this word of knowledge for you right now. I hear the Lord saying that when I spoke that word earlier about, uh, I shared that story of a lady that had felt like um, she wasn't good enough. I saw that word somewhere through the media that that's for you. And what that is, okay. is you're actually up against a performance spirit where you feel like you've got a performance. That's not a thing. <laughs> so let's just show how it's really done. So Peter was out and about. Dorcas was at Joppa. There was a certain disciple named uh, Tabitha, which is translated Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and charitable deeds, which she did. But it happened in those days, she became sick and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. And since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples had heard that Peter was there. They sent two men to him, imploring him not to delay in coming. And Peter arose and went with them. When he had come, they brought him to the upper room. And all the widows stood by him weeping showing the tunics and garments which Dorca had made them while she was with him. But Peter put them all out and knelt down and prayed. He didn't jump up and down and yell in his kundalini spirit and ooze <laughs> all over and <laughs> kick her in the head and say, shiki boom boom bow wow. He prayed. Yep. And turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. She opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up, Then he gave her his hand and lifted her up, and when he had called the saints and widows, he presented her alive, and it became known throughout all Joppa. Many believed on the Lord, so it was that he stayed many days in Joppa <coughs> with Simon the Tanner. He didn't get Tabitha, he didn't get the... Uh... I'm sorry. He didn't get on his book, and yet he was able to do all that with just the Holy Spirit. Isn't that he amazing? Didn't charge her <laughs> oh my! And Axe was such a special, unique. He did news on her. Yeah. 
Acts was such a special, unique period of time of transition and influx to lay the foundation. And it really did need the authenticating power, if you will, of the signs and wonders for the Jews and really anybody else too, to show, no, the God is doing something that is so different than anything you've ever known imposed upon you by the Pharisees and their religion and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So now she, there, she says there is a spirit of performance. She's making that up. Please do not be deceived by this. There is no spirit of performance. There are people and sometimes they're mean. And sometimes we just have feelings of inferiority because we're talented and gifted in other ways. And some people, you know, it's just part of the human condition. It's, it, it is not some spirit. Everything with these people has to equate down to some supernatural thing form for your papa daddy's love and you are chronically ill there's chronic illness stuff that's going on in your body and nobody can touch it no doctor understands it i see like autoimmune problems i see um chronic illness like respiratory infection that never goes away it just comes back all your life and no matter what you do you can't get rid of this thing in Jesus' name, right now, I pray for your breakthrough in your healing. Father, I command that performance spirit to now go. You're going to feel something lift off of you. Even- they do that a lot with the, the snapping and the um, the theatrics, the, the body language, the uh, I command you with my authority because I'm reeking of confidence and bull. I noticed that a lot with them, these people. It's it's learned stuff. They they learn how to trick you. These these people are actors. These people are liars and they know all the different, you know, neurolinguistics. You're gonna listen to what I have to say. Um, they're selling product, they're selling an idea, they're selling a fake church, they're selling I, I'm gonna say it. They are selling, although I would say it's subtle. Again, the subtlety, we talked about that godhood yes they are selling godhood and you can splash god out wherever you want this is blasphemy it's not funny but it's so shocking that this is where we are that people believe that this is of god it's not and uh she's now making up that if you if you ever feel a moment of inferiority which i think is common to the human experience just it is that now there is an attachment with an illness and that attachment now has a demonic uh counterpart to it that that's a lot of baggage to load on to somebody guess what if you're feeling inferior about something You know, maybe you need to just read the Bible. Maybe you need to pray. Maybe you need to get better at that skill. Maybe you need to talk to a soft, kind, compassionate person. Maybe you need to go serve at a homeless shelter or something or do something to help somebody else or go go do something to take your mind off of that. Maybe it's not all about you. Maybe there's all kinds of things that you can do, but she has just loaded all these burdens onto you. Woo! Even in this very room, you're going to feel it lift off of you right now. Performance spirit has been broken. And say this with me. If you would trust me, just repeat after me. If you would trust me? I don't don't trust you. you. No, I don't trust you. I break my agreement (laughs) with the lie that I'm not good enough because I'm a son or daughter of the king of kings. Okay, but again, where is the qualifier of if? If you're in Christ and a son or daughter of God. See, this is another thing I notice with these people with patterns. It is this assumptive group salvation. It is this assumptive, you're all sons and daughters of the Most High. Well, how do you know? When I read my Bible, I see that a good portion of the church is actually on, they're fake. They have some religion, but they're not actually born again. 
They're on the broad road and Christ wrote to them. But here you guys are assuming this group salvation that everybody that's watching this or everybody that's in the studio audience, therefore must be a Christian because they're watching Christian broadcasts. There's a lot of people that are not saved that have affiliated with the church. And now you're helping to ground them in the delusion <clears throat> spiritually that they're okay with God. Where in all this, this is only a 24 minute show, 24 and a half minutes. Where did they ever give the gospel to give a person the chance to become a child of God? Wouldn't you think that would be the most important thing? And you can say it in about 30 seconds. So you really don't need a lot of time. And yet that's absent. You ever notice that? It's always absent. Now look at me. He loves you just as you are. You don't have to be perfect. You're free. So no blood of Jesus. He loves you. You don't, you don't, you don't you're, need. You're perfect just as you are. Does that not ring a bell to anybody? Because nobody's perfect except for Jesus. Exactly. Well, see, remember, you've just bought Godhood now. You just bought the ability to walk around pretending that you have godlike powers, guaranteeing people healing. You know, if she went into a burn unit, they would laugh her out of that place or the parents would probably strangle her, which I don't recommend violence against somebody. But you know what I'm saying? If she actually went to places and said this diatribe of nonsense against people that have uh, suffering. They got to mainline them um, painkiller. Uh, I mean, she could even go to vet places if, if she wanted to. And people that have uh, done horrible things to their pets are in agony. Uh, she, she could heal them. But, you know, this is people centered. But there is a whole world of suffering out there. And she's trying to say that she can heal it. And you need to trust her. And now you're free because you prayed this prayer with her, which wasn't even the gospel. This is very disturbing. And it's this is the thing about it is that it looks so sweet and simple. It looks so good. But this is not this is not biblical. This is not of God what she's doing. She's not authorized to say any of this. You're absolutely free. You're free. You have the victory over this. And your body has now been healed in Jesus' name. Without the cross, without the blood. Why, why, why do you need the blood of Jesus? This woman is insane. Now, I just get this word, Sid, about this thing. When you get your healing and your freedom... It can't come back. Now, when it tries, you can stand up in victory and say, "It no, I've gotten my healing in the name of Jesus, so you cannot come back. The door has been closed. God is raising us up like that. So that when we think, ah, because often people get their healing, right, their breakthrough, and then it's some, the enemy tries to come back right. at us, and then we get discouraged, and we move right back to where we were before. But well, did you get healed of the cancer or didn't you? Hey, listen, that's when it's time we got to rise up. No, that cannot come back in Jesus' name. When people get healed for real through Jesus, it's not like that healing can reverse itself. Okay, that was just straight out weird. See, and the thing is, this, so she has a ministry, Anna Warner Ministries. Nothing about Jesus, but it's about Anna. The Warrior Dance, a seer's guide to victorious spiritual warfare. You were meant to live victoriously. Um, she, she does the, uh, wow. See who she hangs around with? <laughs> Marilyn Hickey. Oops, I did not want to go to that. Nope, nope, nope. I don't want to go to that. 
nope, I do not like Marilyn Hinkie or her or her daughter or anything that they're into. All that hyper signs and wonder stuff. Author of Death at Destiny Image. Oh man, I do not like this stuff. And Sid has no problem promoting it. What is what is this? 2019, the year of illumination. It's like they're 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 teaching people new age and just calling it uh godly. See, Glory Warfare Conference. So she does conferences too. James Cole. We'll probably be wrapping this up soon. I'm probably going to chop this into two parts. Then she goes into churches. See, the change agent goes into the churches, not just through, through the TV. But in... Uh, by being invited. Oh my goodness. So February 20th. She's going to go do this thing. <clears throat> this is what the Bible talked about these people. But because they come to you saying they're Christians. People automatically believe them. This stuff actually reminds me of the stuff that uh, Steve Quayle and Sheila Zelensky are into, or at least who they promote. Uh, who, what was that guy's name? Henry Gruber or whatever? Henry Gruber. Gruber. Um, all of this just supernatural weird stuff. I, I'm very concerned about how Christianity is being changed. Oh, oh, I don't like that. Did you see that? Larry Sparks, come, oh, catch some impartation from Israel. Friends, I'm telling you, this this thing is big. What is this? Nar Israel. Uh, okay, so we're going to wrap this up here in the next couple minutes, but... Um, there is a stalwart connection between NAR Israel and NAR, what you're seeing in America. And because of Michael Nisam, that has been established, that connection, which I'm very grateful. Uh, NAR Watch Israel is a good blog to go check into that. And he has a YouTube channel as well. Now, what I am seeing is that then the unbelieving Jews who uh, do not truly have Jesus Christ in their temple, the Holy Spirit, they are pushing for a kingdom come now. We're going to make the earth better through NAR, and we're going to bring forth this kingdom down here and trigger the return of Jesus. But it's not the real Jesus. It's the fake one. This is the deception, and it's all connected together with people that want to bring forth their Mashiach. Uh, and you have this cooperative group of a thousand points of light all over and they're witches is what they are. They're just doing it in the name of Jesus. She's one of them. And she's fairly high up there. I did not realize that. Starting to kind of connect in, okay, who's Larry Sparks? He's a ministry too. And just going over, you know, this... They, they want to bring forth this third great movement of God. You'll you'll see the Kanye connection to that as they push Kanye. Kanye is doing the Awaken, has done the Awaken 2020 with NAR people. Then you think about the entities who are all pushing Kanye. So many, they're they're all part of it. 
they're all seated throughout the Christian leadership and much more could be said about that. But as you delve into what they've written, who they are, these are witches They claim that God is talking to them through direct revelation on an ongoing basis. And it says here, the fire of God always glorious, gloriously fills temples that present sacrifices. What happens when the temple becomes a sacrifice? A people filled with glory will embrace and fulfill the mandate of God. Listen to this now, please. To fill the earth with God's glory. There is zero mandate from God that you, the humans, will fill the earth with the glory of God. That is not in scripture. Jesus, according to his feasts and how he fulfills his plan in his sovereign way of working with the Father and the Holy Spirit, will bring glory to the earth when he's good and ready. There is an order of events there, the next thing that is to tick off is the correction. There is a network of so many different kinds of NAR people. Even Jeff Durbin of Apologia Studios, who is like neo-Calvinist, big time reformation, uh, but in a really weird preterist um the kingdom is now weird way he is connected into this they're all trying to get rid of the tribulation that god's word says is coming daniel's 70th week and so on and so forth and they believe that they can bring the kingdom of god to earth and be their sons of god and the air and steal away this blessing and become gods. And it really is the thing that the antichrist will be coming and doing, but these are your witchcraft church people and they're all supporting each other. And the, the tie-ins are amazing. Steve Bancars, supposedly former new ager an affiliate sometimes with skywatch TV. He is on apologia pushing Kanye Kanye is with Awaken 2020 filled with NAR people. Um, as you start to strap all these connections together, you, you understand that these thousand points of light, these witches pretending to be Christians are all setting the earth up for the coming of the fake antichrist, but they'll call him Jesus Christ. And NAR is that slimy glue that holds this demonic stuff all together. And they are everywhere. Oh. She's part of it. Sid Roth is part of it. Larry Sparks is part of it. Um, accessing the greater glory, the prophetic invitation to the new realms of the Holy Spirit encounter. No. Okay. So look at this. Larry Sparks is passionate about helping all Christian followers. So we don't want to use the word born agains. They use this Christ followers uh, experience the more of God that that already puts red flags up bothering me. The more of God. How much of God do you get when you get reborn? You get all of what God has to give. A dynamic relationship with the presence and power of the Holy Spirit through his teaching ministry. Charisma magazine articles. Charisma. Media resources and books, Larry provides tools that show Christians individually and collectively how to position themselves for revival. What does that even mean? How to position yourselves for revival? Revival used to mean that you would go out and preach the gospel to huge numbers of unsaved people that were on their way to hell or to fake Christians that were on their way to hell because they were fake. Now they have changed this word into like this big, huge manifestation of power in a coming kingdom, and you get to be part of it, Bubby. He's from Regent University. Well, there you go. 
He serves as a publisher for Destiny Image House, a publishing house. So they write books, churn this out. And he is an author of Breakthrough Faith, Living a Life Where Anything is Possible. So there's so much with him. And him and Anna do all this work together. They do all this work together with Sid. And you have this whole plethora of people. Here's all kinds of Anna books, but or Anna or whatever her name is, however you want to pronounce the A. And a whole bunch of other individuals. And they're all witches. They're all witches. In the name of Jesus, exactly what your Bible said would happen is happening. And this is how they disseminate this. They are getting the world prepared for the Antichrist and the Antichrist kingdom. It all ties back to Israel. It all ties back to ecumenicism and going underneath the fake Mashiach that's coming as his fake church. So not the bride of Christ, but the whore of the Antichrist, <coughs> all of them together in one in rebellion to the one true God, Yahweh, and Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And then also, in other contexts, uh, the sons of God, but fake ones, the fake ones of the latter reign. And this is insidious. Now, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and wrap this up and end it, but this, there's so much going on. You have to understand how many people are involved in this. The tentacles are spreading out all over the place. And they are... Yes, they are preparing the earth for great evil. What is this? The new Christian era? I don't know what that is. Sean Boltz, you see all these NAR people. They're everywhere. James Gall. This is serious. This is not uh this is not the Christianity that Paul and Jesus and the apostles left us with. This is the fake counterfeit. This is going to usher in the judgment and people don't even realize this isn't Christianity. Anyhow, thank you so much. Uh, please keep yourself safe and stick in the Bible. That's the only truth you need.